Chapter 4 By the late summer, the news of what had happened on the animal farm had spread across half the country. Every day, pigeons were sent with instructions to mingle with the animals on neighboring farms. Tell them the story of the rebellion and teach them the tune of Beasts of England. Most of the time, Mr. Jones had spent sitting in the tavern, complaining to anyone who would listen of the monstrous injustice he had suffered. The other farmers at first pretended to laugh to scorn his ideas. Animals managing a farm? They'll be starving to death. The whole thing will be over in a fortnight. When time passed and the animals had evidently not starved to death, they began to talk of the terrible wickedness that now flourished on the animal farm. Cannibalism, torture. They have their females in common. This is what comes of rebelling against the laws of nature. But rumors of a wonderful farm where the human beings had been turned out and the animals managed their own affairs continued to circulate. Throughout that year, a wave of rebellionists ran through the countryside. The tune and words of Beasts of England were known everywhere. And human beings secretly trembled, hearing in it a prophecy of their future doom. Early in October. Jones! Jones! And his men! Armed! Obviously, they were going to attempt the recapture of the farm. This had long been expected, and all preparations had been made. Snowball had studied an old book of Julius Caesar's campaigns. The first attack. All the pigeons, followed by the geese, a skirmishing maneuver intended to create disorder. Then Snowball launched the second line of attack. Suddenly, a retreat. The animals turned and fled into the yard. The men gave a shout of triumph. They saw their enemies in flight and rushed after them in disorder. This was just what Snowball had intended, an ambush in the cowshed. They were gored, kicked, bitten, trampled on. There was not an animal on the farm that did not take vengeance on them after his own fashion. And so within five minutes of their invasion, they were in ignominious retreat. An impromptu celebration of the victory was held immediately. The flag was run up and Beasts of England was sung a number of times. The sheep who had been killed was given a solemn funeral, and after much discussion, the battle was called the Battle of the Cowshed.